hard to imagine, uh, but passing the plate wasn't always necessary to financially support the church. Not until the late 1800s did churches actually count on voluntary contributions to keep their doors open. You see, just like it was in Europe, the new government of colonial America established, sanctioned, and financially supported the church. The colonists couldn't see it any, any differently. <clears throat> A prosperous society depends upon having citizens of good character. And where else oh, would this Mr. good Riley. character come mm. from but the church, of course. Did you know in 18 that passing the offering plate was not always necessary for the church to financially support itself? Oh, I'm sorry. Hi, Mr. Riley, how are you? I always thought tithing, you know, giving one-tenth of your income to the church was how the church always survived, but it really didn't start that way. Did you know that? Huh? It's like people today think that Christian stewardship is all about how the church gets its money to pay its bills. I couldn't agree more, buddy. Sorry. All right, I'm just gonna say it. You know that thing where you forget to ask someone's name the first time you meet them, and then it's weird to ask them after you've known them for a while? I don't know your name. Pete. All right, thank you. Pete? Um, I think that people think that stewardship is just about paying the bills. I know, right? It's like this stewardship thing got all turned around, if you ask me. Stewards of the church. What do you mean? What do you think? Tithes and offerings? Park Grove Community Church has lost its pastor and its way, and is closing its doors, unless it reinvents itself, despite itself, with the help of Chuck. the committee. And then tithing actually became popular after the Civil War because the government no longer supported the church. Uh, just think that it doesn't hey. make that up. Which the colonists first did because everybody knew the church is where you went to learn good manners and good citizenship and to be a Christian. So the states used to support the church. Or something like that. The biblical principle of tithing. God gives unto us, and we give back to God one-tenth of everything God has blessed us with. Someone's been watching Chuck Knows Church. What does that have to do with the price of tea in China? China? It's just an expression, Glenda. Well, maybe Mr. Chuck knows about China's tea prices. He has done a lot of episodes. He knows about a lot of stuff. Glenda, hey, please. Chuck does not know everything, okay? Well, of course not everything. I didn't say everything. Where is Chuck anyway? See, see? He doesn't know how to get to this meeting on time, now does he? Mr. Perfect. <sighs> so, without religious taxes, uh, around 1830 or so, pastors had to rely solely on their congregation for financial support. Had to find new ways to survive in the free market of American religion. Sounds about right. How about the biblical principle of tithing? Pete. Have you been watching Chuck Knows Church? Huh? Sure, Chuck, on my 100-inch TV, but only if my busy schedule permits <laughs> me the time. Uh, time. Um, uh, you have to excuse me, Pete. Uh, I have a meeting. Sorry. See you later, Pete. The man has more meetings. <laughs> He's always Mr. late. He's it seems All right, nice. sorry I'm la late. What did I miss? Uh, just Glenda going on about the history of tithing. Really? I was just talking to Pete outside about this, this very okay, same thing. Okay, first order of business, the uh, annual stewardship uh, campaign. Opening you, prayer? It, huh? Opening prayer. Opening prayer, yes, it is here on the agenda. I apologize. Hannah. God be with us as we gather to do your work. Please help guide us to be good stewards of your church as the hands and feet of Christ. Amen. Amen. First order of business, the annual stewardship campaign. Oh, Let's on. jump into it. Okay, Riley, okay. Riley, uh, I've got a suggestion. Oh, thank you. I was hoping you would say that. Please continue. So why don't we commission someone to make a beautiful campaign banner and we could have this really offensive slogan attached to it? What are you talking? That's, 
That's our annual campaign banner. We use that banner every year. It's the favorite, God knows, yes, Glenda. Um, joys and concerns. Excuse me? Well, I just thought, you know, the small group thing, uh -huh. opening prayer, joys and concerns, maybe we should just check in with one another. Coffee break. Uh, well, I will say that stewardship is a concern of mine. Sometimes a joy. Well, that's great to hear. It just so happens that it recently came up in conversation uh, how stewardship really isn't about how the church pays its bills. Well, what do you mean? Well, if, if no one tithes, how are we going to keep the lights on? We don't keep the lights on. That is exactly what we're trying to figure out, Daniel. A strong stewardship campaign is what is needed. Make people realize their duty. Huh? their obligation, their commitment to the church, the importance of strong stewardship. Everyone must pay their dues, okay? Wow. Obligation? Yes. My dues? Yes. That makes me want to rush right out and give to the church. Guys, look, I tithe, but I don't do it out of obligation or duty. Well, tithing isn't the end-all and be-all of stewardship, is it? I think the message, what stewardship is really all about, has gotten all mixed up. Being stewards of the church has to mean more than just an obligation to give to the church budget. Yes, how about our gratitude to God? Well, I think it's about hope and compassion, about the community. And shouldn't it be more about the joyful side of giving? Yeah, I'm with Hannah, things that drive generosity. Oh, you'd think, but... The church is always talking about money. I hear people say that all the time. Or we avoid talking about it completely. At least I do. Yeah, but you can't have it both ways, Glenda. I think what we're really saying is that it's dangerous when a church is too focused on meeting their budget. What's wrong with meeting the budget? Not meeting the budget is exactly what put us in this position in the first place, right? Don't we miss it then, what Chuck just said? teaching people the joys of living as generous disciples. Generous disciples. I like that. In fact, I'm going to tweet that. What are you talking about? Jesus talked about money all the time. Yeah, but what exactly was he saying? Isn't there something in the Bible, uh, help me out here, uh, uh, about a rich young ruler? Oh, a, a rich man, yeah. He was, he was faithful, tithing, following all of the commandments, giving to the temple. Uh, I'm sorry, I, I don't know that story. Uh, it's something about a, a rich man who wanted eternal life, wanted to know how to get to heaven. Yes, it's in Matthew, Mark, and Luke. Yes, and Jesus told him he was lacking just one thing, told him to sell all of his things, give it to the poor, and follow him. And you will have treasures in heaven. Wow. Well, what did he do? He, he couldn't, couldn't do it. it. Because Jesus knew the problem with the rich man wasn't giving money to the temple because he had plenty of it. It was more about the wealth he wanted to hold on to. I mean, his money had a, a, a stranglehold on him and he couldn't let go of it. So Jesus did speak a lot about money, you're right, Mr. Riley, but it, it was always in the context of how we use it as faithful stewards, how it can bring us uh, a joy in our generosity. But also how it can be a barrier to joy by loving money too much. Like the rich young ruler. So, at its heart, what is stewardship really all about? Oh, I know this one. Relationships. Awesome. What do you mean by that? Uh, re relationships? Uh, all right, I don't actually know. Relationships just tends to be the answer to your questions. Well, uh, you may be right, but I do think you are onto something here. Relationship with what? See, right again. Um, our relationship to a local church. Or with the community around our church. Here and around the world. But most of all, it's about our relationship with Christ, right? I couldn't agree more, Mr. Riley. So, what does that mean? Uh, does stewardship relate to, or react, or uh, interact, ooh, uh, uh, intermingle, or, or uh, g you know, just generally mix it up with our relationship with Christ? Uh, how to uh, live out God's message in the world. It's less about 
paying the bills and more about discipleship. Mm. I mean, that's real stewardship. Exactly. I think we spend too much time trying to find people who have the money to save the church when instead we should be helping people lead generous lives. I think I'm starting to get it. You know, it, it, it's not so much about uh, giving 10% of your income <laughs> or 5 or 2% or even, but it's about, well, it's about what we do with the other 90, 95, 98%. I never thought about it that way before. You know, Mr. Riley, it's not about giving until it hurts. It's about giving until it feels good. Say, that's another good one. Giving until it feels good. I'd tweet that too. It's kind of like, it's kind of like Christmas morning when you're feeling excited, not just because of the, the gifts you've been given, but the gifts you give. Imagine if we could feel that joy throughout the year. Can you guys excuse me for a minute? Wow. I love giving gifts. Yes. Yes. Imagine if we could feel like that throughout the whole year. Hey. Here. Church needs this. Wow. Thanks, Pete. Hey, you want to come inside and uh, meet the rest of the committee? Or Pete? Why are you holding a dirty cup? The widow's might. <laughs> the widow's what? Pete, the uh, the homeless guy. Outside, he uh, he just gave us fifty cents that somebody put in his cup. The widow's might. I'm sorry. Who's Pete? <laughs> Pete, the Chuck. What are you talking about? It's a the, mite. The homeless. A mite was the smallest coin of Jesus' time. Yeah, like a penny or less. Well, Jesus watched the crowd putting their gifts in the temple treasury and that he saw a widow put in two copper coins. It's like Bible study time here at the Compass Committee. Mm -hmm. So two mites, two copper mites. coins. Here we go again. Jesus told his disciples that he knew the poor widow had given more than anybody else. Because they all had money. They all gave out of their abundance, but this widow gave out of poverty. Put in everything she had. Everything. Yeah, everything. That scripture gets me every time. Guys, seriously, it's like a gold mine in here today. <laughs> Two mites, everything she had. This is going to be trending very quickly. I don't know what that means. I must admit, balancing the budget, pushing stewardship campaigns for how many years now, the rich young ruler, the widow who gave all she had out of poverty, uh, generous disciples. <sighs> These scriptures have always made me uncomfortable. But, yeah, it's starting to make sense to me now. Stewardship is the joy of generous giving. So Pete, a homeless guy, gave everything he had to the church. Pete? Mm -hmm. What homeless man? Pete. What? If you want to give I me... I think we're going to need a new banner. 